I want to turn to um, pay homage and pay tribute to a guy that you knew well, worked with, uh, a, a New Yorker, a Knicks fan as well, and and uh, you know tragically passed away this past week, man, and and that was uh, Michael K. Williams, um, great actor, absolutely great actor, and you know from what you read from many of the tributes, a great person as well. Um, how do you reflect on on his passing, and and what did he mean to you? So this is the first time I'm talking about it since, you know, his passing and, uh, you know, I'm glad I'm doing it on your platform. So thank you for the opportunity, you know, CP. And, mm-hmm. you know, the first day I stepped foot on the set of The Wire, you know, I, w- I, w- I was nervous. I was mm-hmm. a young kid, 15 years old, and I didn't know what I was stepping into, you know, and I didn't think that I was po- I was able to to do what I what was asked of me. And the very first person I met was Michael K. Williams. Um, and I was nervous because this is, you know, Omar, right, from the show. And mm-hmm. I only saw him being this shotgun toting, you know, maniac, right? Like this Robin Hood of the of the show. And I was like, I'm like I'm meeting him in person. I'm 15. I'm like, like I'm petrified, right? Yeah, and yeah. he was one of the nicest people I had ever met. You know, the moment I met him, that smile, it just lit the room up. And it, and um, o- automatically he let me know and had me feel that that I was safe. Mm. You know, and that um and that um my fault. Um you know, he made me feel a part, you know, and um And that's just who Michael was, man. He, you know, Michael, you know, oh, you can look at all of his characters and he, uh, he played all of these like menacing kind of grueling characters. And, but he was probably one of the nicest people you ever meet in your life. He went and, you know, Michael would give you the shirt off his back. You know what I mean? Michael would, Michael wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight, mm. you know, and that's because he just didn't want to harm people because he had been through so much harm in his life. And um, when I heard that he passed CP, I, I, it hit me and I didn't, mm. you know, so I would see Mike a lot because, because uh, our like meeting spot was in Nick games. You know, uh, you guys know that Michael was at probably every Nick game that he could possibly be at. You know, Mike Breen is a huge fan of the show. And if I wasn't at the game and if but if Mike was at the game, Mike Breen made sure to say we got Michael K. Williams. He would always say, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's what, you know, he was a staple. He was actually turning into like the voice of the team. You know, he was the voice of that. Our, I believe our um the big like the big commercial to start the season the playoff commercial year. yep the playoff the plays yeah you're right excuse me the playoff commercial he was the voice of it and that's what it was michael was the voice for so many people you know coming from brooklyn coming from um you know we grew up maybe 10 5 minutes away from each other you know he grew up in and um he grew up in vanderveer projects i grew up in linwood projects in east flatbush and he was the voice for a lot of people who needed to be heard. And Michael was just that guy who made sure that he did his part to push the narrative that we are all human, that we are all special, that we are all people who need to be um, heard. And uh, I'm gonna miss him. I'm go- actually in the morning, I'm going to his memorial service. Mm. Um, and it's a it's just a private service for friends and family. But um I never would have thought in a million years I would go to Michael K. Williams, you know, homegoing service. Mm-hmm. Because to me, you know, I know that we all have a date, but to me, he was um, he was immortal because you know, there are some people on this planet you just like when Kobe passed, right? Yeah, yeah. You just don't you just don't see them ever leaving, man. And um I'm sorry if I'm like going on. No man, whatever. take throw, take your time, take your yeah. time, bro. Take take your time, man. Yeah. You, get, you got the floor, bro. Yeah, thank you. Um I'm just I'm gonna miss him. You know, he was more than an actor, you know. He he was he didn't and 
act as people. He became characters. He 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 became human beings, right? If you watch him as Omar on the wire, like just think about it. That character shouldn't have been loved as much as he loved. Mm, mm-hmm. He was loved. You're like he shouldn't have been. Like if you ask people who their favorite character on the wire, nine times out of ten they will say Omar. And I, I don't know if David Samuel, when he wrote that role, he thought like this character would be this. But that's all because of who Michael K. Williams was as a person, man. And, you know, I just, I just, listen, man, if you're going through something out there, if, if you feel alone, you know, there's a lot of, this is why I'm a Nick fan, you know, CP Alex. I'm not a, I love the team. I, I love what we are able to do. And I love being rooting for basketball because I'm a diehard basketball fan. But I think the reason I'm I'm like a real diehard Nick fan is because we all there like when I'm in the streets and I see people wear the orange and blue, when I'm at the games and people stop me or I stop people, it's always that common thread. And, and that common thread is that we in this together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like regardless of what, like I was a Nick fan 10 years ago when like, I, you know, I, I don't know if I tell Alex or, I, or Macri or, and, and, and those guys, Andrew and those guys. But there was a time where I went to like a Nick game. I went to like 18 straight home games and we lost every single one. But you couldn't tell that in the building because we was like, we in this, y'all. Mm-hmm. We family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our, org- our, our front office is trash. Yeah, we got Alex Chavet and and, and, and like these <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, we family. You know what I mean? Like we in this. and And I think that's what what this team means to me and i think that's what the team meant to michael and i think that's what we all mean to each other in this next community so if you're going through something man and and you know i'm I'm sure cp you help so many people just like people you know probably going through depression going through a lot going through trauma and they tune into you guys shows even your show alex you know nick's jets and etc like they'll tune into you guys show and and say, like, I feel like I'm a part of something. And sometimes people need that, you know, and I'm sure Michael needed that. And and there's a lot of people who need that, you know, and I needed that even when I found you all, you know, when I found the Knicks community, I was like, oh, I'm not alone, for real, for real. It's one thing to say that you see each other at the games, but to see a whole community and message boards and all of this shit, man, like, it's special, man. So, um, you know, I'm just grateful that, we have spaces like this. And if you, if you're going through something, y'all reach out, you know what I mean? Like reach out to people you see in the comments, you know, reach out to your family, reach out to people, speak up. And I know it may be hard, but speak up. If you're going through, you know, substance abuse, if you're going through, you know, mental health issues and you feel like you're alone, you're not, you're not. And I'm sure Michael knew he was loved, but he never understood he was loved. And I think mm. that's why the substance abuse continued. So I just pray that he's no longer alone and he no longer feels alone. And I hope, you know, from above, he's looking down and seeing all the love that's been poured on him, man, from, you know, all the Knicks community, from the fans, the supporters, from so many people, you know, showing him so much love. And um, I hope he sees it. And, you know, and if you're going through something, y'all, like, you just know you're not alone, but um, yeah, that's you know, rest in peace, Michael K. Williams, yeah. diehard Knicks fan at every game, talking almost as loud as Tracy Morgan. <laughs> you, can't, you can't talk louder than Tracy at a game. I don't know if y'all ever heard, you could probably hear Tracy from the TV, yeah, 100%. You know I mean? he's right next to <laughs> and Mike, is, and Mike is right there next to him, you know, at times talking just as loud, and that's what Mike was, man. So, rest in peace to Michael K. Williams. Yeah. Uh, I, I pray that his family is is okay, and I pray you know everybody. And thank you all for supporting him. Please speak his name. You know, keep him in your in your memories when you go and do what you do. Because if you need if you needed to look at anybody's life and say, I think I I, I need a motivation, go look at Michael K's story. Go read it up. Go YouTube it because mm-hmm. you can hear his him speak about him himself. But you know, be motivated, and you know. Do something if you can. 
Um, but yeah, rest in peace, Michael K. Williams. Yeah, absolutely, man. Very, very well said. And 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 a couple more questions. You know, you know, you had mentioned um, the role that he played with with Omar, and and maybe the creators of the show never expecting that character um, to to be almost larger than life. And and it's so interesting when you when you look at the talent that he was. When you look at his role as Omar and and as Chalky White. In, in Boardwalk Empire, that was one of my favorite shows. You know, these are iconic roles, and and he wasn't even the leading guy for those for for those shows. Come on, talk about it, man. Uh, just that's a te- that's a uh, a testament of you as not to me. Honestly, it wasn't even just about his acting. You know, there's some people who have been in things and their their characters have lived for so long, but it's just because they just were such amazing actors and yeah he was an amazing actor and he is an amazing actor but i just think it was like what he what he brought to the authenticity of him you know of michael k mm. the the energy the feeling like michael k you would have really thought he was from baltimore mm. like you know what i mean and he was from brooklyn new york right but when he was in his bro- his brooklyn space when he did his vice tv special going to different you know, neighborhood and, and 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 speaking and and shining light on those situations. You would have thought he was a philanthropist, right? You would have thought he was a journalist. And then when he played Chucky White on Boardwalk Empire, you would have thought he grew up in the Prohibition era, right? Like it's just yeah, yeah. you just would have. It's just the level of like what he brought to his any space he was in. Cause you know he started as a dancer, and I don't know if y'all have been seeing the videos of Mike dancing. Yeah, you know that have been going viral. But yo, when he was a dancer, he just brought joy with his steps and his moves, and and that's what Mike was, man. He brought himself to everything, and I think that's what was important about him being on this planet. And you know, God had a better story and a better ending for him, but the story is not done, man. He's about to win this Emmy. You know, he's yeah. nominated for an Emmy this year. He's about to win that. For love, Lovecraft country, and uh, you know his story is still being written, and I'm I'm glad to say I was a very small part of it, but nonetheless I was a part of it for sure. For for sure, and you know the thing that um, really surprised me, uh, and and we saw it we saw it with with Heath, Heath Ledger in terms of his passing and uh, the impact mm-hmm. that they said him playing the Joker had on on him. But with Michael K. Williams, you know, I was, I was watching the interview with him and, and Tamron Hall, and, and he talked about the fact that it was hard for him to really um, come down off of the Omar character because it was like the the admiration that he was getting, the love that he was getting from people like Barack Obama, for example, would he would refer to him as Omar. You know, he was like, people yeah. would show me so much love, so much love, but they, they, they love Omar. But but on the flip side, in reality, you know, he's still a guy in terms of Michael K. Williams, who, you know, is an insecure guy that was battling his demons. And he said, you know, playing that character really took a toll on him in, in terms of, you know, the substances and things of that nature, because it was just really hard to separate the two. Yeah, I think playing any, you know, I only played uh, my character on The Wire for a year, maybe a year and a half, give or take. He played that character for four to five years, mm. six years, you know, and that's you. I can imagine how tough that was, because honestly, there's bits of naming that lives in me still. You know mm. what I mean? And, you know, I I think, you know, his past life prior to being an actor and prior to being an, a dancer, I think it still had a huge effect on him. And, you know, and talking to his friends and, you know, and people that were super close to he never truly felt like he he deserved the accolades he got. He never truly felt like he deserved all of the recognition he got. And it's just so sad to think that because he did, you know, and we all do, whether you are a big actor on the HBO show or, you know, you were just out here running and gunning, trying to make a dollar, you know, you deserve whatever it is you have. You deserve it. You deserve love. You deserve friendship. You deserve happiness. You deserve these things. And whether, like I said, whether you're an actor on a show or not, I just hope you know that you're worthy, you know, and you matter. And, and I, and, you know, there's a lot of people who don't feel that way and it, my heart breaks for them. And, but your heart is big enough to be put back together. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. You're big enough to, to, to figure it out. And if you still got air in your lungs, if you're still on this planet, man, keep pushing, keep pushing, you know, and, 
and that's why you know to tap it back into the Knicks, man. Like we've always kept pushing. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, we keep pushing, and we had a season like we had last year because we didn't. Thank give you for up. using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. You yeah. know, it's your, your assistant. I've been waiting to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm British was. assistant. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man, we keep pushing, man. Keep pushing, man. Like if if you're a Knicks fan and you're listening to this, keep pushing, man. Like you know. I, I said to my Alex show, man, there's going to be a time where people are not, we, they can't laugh at us no more, man. They're not going to be able to laugh at us. We, there was going to be a time when we have that parade down Fifth Ave, man, and you ain't going, you're going to be like, I remember these idiots drooping for this team, in, you know, 10 years ago, man. Nah, man, we keep pushing. And that's the story of a Nick fan, a New Yorker. And, you know, I hope that people are going through things. I hope they, they, they share that same sentiment, man. Uh, well, well said, man. And and um, la- last on on uh, Michael K and um, his impact in terms of um, the overall impact of the show, the why. You know, I, I was reading an op ed in the New York Times that the creator uh, David Simon had penned in, in today's uh, edition, and he spoke about his early interactions with him in terms of uh, for season two. He said that, you know, Michael K had had come into the trailer and was really questioning the direction of that season in terms of, I I guess, you know, because they were going to focus more on the port of Baltimore and, you know, kind of move away from uh, the the inner city and and focus more on, uh, you know, the organized crime and and different aspects of Baltimore. Yes, still focusing Mm -hmm. on the corruption, but from different institutions. And, you know, Michael Kay's concern that, you know, it was kind of moving away from, uh, uh, you know, focusing on, you know, an all black audience. And what was the message? Where, Where was it? going and he said that it became a ritual that before each season that they would have that meeting in terms of okay what is our message what are we trying to say this season what are we trying to impart and David Simon was saying how he really um, valued that in Michael K. Williams because he ultimately in you know took on the show not just from his character but really embraced the whole story the whole journey of the show and really became an evangelist for that message of the, you know, the political and the socio, the societal, the socioeconomic issues in his interviews and really, you know, putting that out there on the forefront, a lot of those issues. Uh, what's your take on that? Come on, man. That's that. If that doesn't show you, you know, the the story of Michael K and the, the essence of who he was, the fact that he wanted to make sure that every season actually meant something and it wasn't just a TV show it was more of a, a message, you know, that's just what it was, man. You know, when, you know, I spoke to David about it and, you know, if we, if we didn't have season two be what it was, there would have been no different from the wire and let's say law and order, right. It would have been a cop show mm-hmm. and nothing against law and order. Cause I was on there a few times as well, but like, there's a difference in what we did and what cop shows do, you know, mm-hmm. cop shows, they talk about a subject of a victim, them a moment a mer- uh, 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 a suspect right we talked about a system and 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 you know the fact that michael fought for it, like what we what are we speaking about here like right because i you know i said i heard mike say like you know when it came when season two hit it felt like y'all every time a black show was working y'all take it away from us and mm-hmm. give it but you know the fact that david even cared enough about us as a culture to say i if I have to tell this story in season two so that every other season matters. Because if, if I don't give the landscape of the world, it'll just be about a drug show. Right. And that's not what right. it was. And Michael was more than that. Right. And look, think about it. Y'all like a guy who was dealing with substance abuse, wanting to be on something more than a drug show. Hmm. Mm. because he knew what it was doing to him most likely. And I don't want to speak for him, but I could just think and guess, right? Like he, he knew what it was probably doing to him and he wanted to tell a different story and that's what he did. And um, come on, man, Mike is, Mike is special, man. He is special. I'm not going to say was, cause he's still with us. Right. He is special, you know? And I think, you know, someone said in the comments that Mike deserves you know, a tribute to God and man. He deserves yeah. a video, a montage, maybe even, right? He deserves that because he was one of us, you know, and and 
And even if they don't do it right, because there's so much going on, big season, but like, I, I think he he deserves the act. What you're doing here, he deserves it. You know what I mean? Just giving me a a, a, a time to talk about him. It, it, he deserves this, and um, I hope he just keeps speaking speaking his name and talking about him. Yeah, I hope so. I think they will. But um, if not, you know, this platform could certainly serve as one, man, because, you know, you, you knew him. You knew him well and, and uh, you know, got a chance to work with him and, and be inspired by him. So uh, I definitely appreciate, you know, you, you sharing those sentiments, man. And truly tragic situation. But we certainly, you know, keep his family, lift his family up and, and his friends as well, man. So th- thanks again for sharing those thoughts. Anytime. Anytime, my brother.